Today we're kicking off a new series where we're going to take a look at all 31 NHL teams and what their offseason plans should be and how they can get better for next year and what they have to deal with to get there. We'll go through all these teams, but we're starting with the 31st ranked team in the NHL, the Detroit Red Wings, and that's coming up next. So welcome back to Top Shelf Hawking. Of course, if you're new to the channel, this might be a new series to you, but if you've been following along the channel for a while, this will be the third year that I've done this type of series where we call it the What's Next series, where we look at the off-season plans for all teams around the NHL. So we're going to take a look at how they finished last year, what do they have for contracts coming up for unrestricted free agents, restricted free agents, uh, what kind of trades they should make, what kind of holes they have in their team, just to kind of do an overall analysis of where they should put their focus during the offseason and what we should expect to see out of them before next season gets underway. So we're going to do this series in the order that the teams finish. Instead of going alphabetical, I thought we'd change it up. So we're going to start here with team number 31, the Detroit Red Wings. So of course we've already established the fact that the Red Wings were the worst team in the NHL last year. Unfortunately they did not have great luck in the NHL draft lottery. They will be picking number four overall in the 2020 NHL draft but they're still bound to get a really solid player that's going to be very helpful here to their future. Uh, the Red Wings finished with a record of 17, 49, and 5 for 39 points. Of course last in their division, last in the NHL. Are also going to take a quick look here at some of their other key categories and how they performed. Uh, starting with goal four the Red Wings scored 145 goals last year which was clearly way not enough to do better and they also allowed 267 which also was not great their special teams they had a power play of 14.9 percent which was 29th best in the league clearly not very good and they had the league's worst penalty kill at 74.3 percent so obviously there wasn't a lot of things going well in Detroit last year they really bottomed out uh, Steve Eisenman's gonna have to take this team on a bit of a rebuild uh, they're not as deep and far along with the prospects and other like other some other teams that are you know not too far ahead of them here in the NHL standings so now let's take a look at what they have lined up for their salary cap for next year and what they have for upcoming pending contracts so as you can see from the snapshot here from catfriendly.com, right now they only have 10 players under contract for the 2021 NHL season for a total of $46.8 million. So they have a lot of people on expiring deals, UFAs and RFAs, which we'll get into here momentarily. But obviously that gives Steve Eiserman a ton of flexibility on how he can start making changes to this team to really to, you know, work towards the future and getting out of the league's basement. Now, if you take a look at their list of restricted free agents, they have some pretty significant ones, including Anthony Mantha and Tyler Bertuzzi, who many feel both those guys are going to be a big part of their core moving forward. They're already part of the young core of the team now, playing big roles at young ages, so that's likely only going to continue to uh, to improve. Now, there's been some trade talk around a guy like Mantha that maybe they should consider trading him for a top defenseman or a top center iceman, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty confident that Eiserman is going to sign the big guy to a, a new deal. I mean, he's got a lot of size. He can be a 30-goal scorer, uh, even, even though he's a winger. Uh, still, he's a type of player that doesn't, you know, come along that easily. I don't see Iserman necessarily trading him, but I guess you can never say never in today's NHL. Besides those guys, you also have Adam Ernie and Brendan Perlini. Uh, to be honest, both both those guys, I would not be shocked if they're not qualified as restricted free agents, thus me making them UFAs, and maybe they don't come back, or maybe they come back for less money, but I'm not sure that either of those players really have a spot on the franchise longer term uh they've already they also have madison bowie on the back end as well as christopher N and dimitri timashov so obviously those guys very well could be qualified they're not overly expensive to keep around and could certainly play a role on the team especially timashov i think can get a, a spot next year and bowie very well could as well uh, now let's take a look at who they have for unrestricted free agents and see if they're likely to return or depart via free agency now, their unrestricted list doesn't have anything too glaring. They have goaltender Jimmy Howard, who many feel has likely played his last game as a Red Wing. He struggled mightily last year, but of course the team in front of him were not really good at all. Uh, that did not help matters, but really doubtful that Howard comes back considering the amount of NHL goaltenders 
that are already proven and established that are either uh, due for a new contract or in the trade rumor mill. I think Eisman definitely comes back next year with somebody to replace Howard. They still have goaltender Jonathan Bernier under contract for another year. So I think it's going to be Bernier and somebody else that they sign or trade for uh, to be the goaltending tandem next year. Uh, they don't have a very deep goaltending prospect pool. So that's something they really need to build on here going forward. But I don't think Howard is back. They also have Sam Gagne, Trevor Daly, and Jonathan Erickson. I think Daly and Erickson on the blue line both end up retiring. I don't see them returning. They both clearly lost a step, and I just don't see a situation where the Red Wings bring them back, and I'd be surprised if they get other NHL contracts. In regards to Sam Gagne, I don't think he'll be back, but I guess you just never know. I wouldn't be shocked to see him get a league minimum contract, maybe somewhere, but Detroit could easily give that roster spot to one of their uh, you know younger players looking to develop rather than have you know another veteran around because they just still have enough veterans under contract to kind of play those necessary roles within the team. Let's take a look at what their main off-season objectives are going to be so this team can move forward to get better for next year and beyond. Clearly, they need to make use of that number four overall pick. Now, it's debatable on who they're going to select because obviously Alexi Lafreniere is a, you know, a lock to go number one. You got Byfield and Stutzla likely going 2-3. There's some debate over which order they're going to go in, who the Kings will take. But regardless, by the time we get to the Red Wings at four, they're likely both off the board. So they could take the top defenseman in the draft and Jamie Drysdale. They could take another center, which some feel that they might have their eye on a guy like Cole Perfetti. They could go after Lucas Raymond, who's a really solid two-way winger who can be very offensive and tough to play against. So, I mean, you know, they've had very solid good luck with European players in the past. So I could see Iserman making, a, a, you know, a plunge there for, for Raymond. Obviously, Marco Rossi, another center iceman, who's also a European center iceman from Austria. Another great possibility. They could even go a little bit off the board, which Iserman apparently is not afraid to do, and take the top goaltender in the draft, Yaroslav Askarov, uh, since their goaltending uh, prospect area is so weak and depleted here. I mean, they really need a goalie of the future. And he could easily be that guy for the Red Wings. Now, it might be a year or two before he comes to North America, but that's okay. They could certainly plung along with what they have now. Like I said, maybe find another uh, veteran as a free agent or trade uh, for one to two years on a short-term stopgap while they're waiting for him to come over and sign. Uh, difficult to say what Eisenberg does with that pick, but the main thing is, is Eisenberg needs to make sure he puts that pick to good use and gets a big piece of the team's future. Now, regardless if they use that pick to address goaltending or not, Finding a goaltender to play with Jonathan Bernier is also really, really high on the priority list. Now, of course, I'm not sure what Eisenberg's main objective here is going to be. Maybe he'll feel that they don't, they don't really care how bad they are next year. Because obviously, as teams are rebuilding, they want to get those high picks. And they're not overly concerned about working their way up the standings too quickly. Because they know, and being realistic, that it's going to take some time. So maybe in the case of the Red Wings, you know, they don't really focus too hard on goaltending. But somebody's got to be between the pipes. You can't put Bernie out there for all 82 games. They need to find somebody for sure. Obviously, they need to determine the future of Anthony Mantha and Tyler Bertuzzi, who I had indicated earlier in the video that more than likely they get signed to become a, a long-term fixture with this core group of players to take the team in the right direction moving forward. They both had pretty decent careers so far in the early stages of it, so I would really be surprised if that's not the case. Uh, but obviously, what kind of deals they get is uh, up for debate. I think Eisenman will likely give them maybe not the seven- or eight-year deals, but we're probably looking at that four- to five range you know uh, in the case of mantha he might be looking for maybe a five-year deal around five million or maybe a little better i mean he has a lot of goal scoring there and bertuzzi can be a good uh, player for them as well so either way they need to determine their future and either sign them or move on but i fully suspect they get signed and become a big piece of the team's future obviously this team needs to start incorporating more of its youth which i fully suspect iceman will have as part of his plan i would think that the top defenseman they took last year marit cider i think cider gets into the lineup they can try to find ways to get more time for zadina and joe valino uh, to determine is michael rasmussen ready to jump back in it two years ago he played a fair bit in the nhl the last year was more of a, you know more so in the american league so they have some good young pieces there that they need to kind of determine where they fit longer term as well and make sure their youth gets plenty of opportunity obviously they might as well grow with the mistakes and different things that come from a young player's game like that uh, but they clearly all look like they're ready to take on a bigger role for the coming season and of course whoever they take at the number four pick as well 
Uh, depending on who they are, they, they very well could jump into the league right away, but they might not. This depends on what direction they go in. Some of the players that could go with that spot, I feel, are NHL ready, but uh, a lot of them are probably going to need an extra year or so before they really are comfortable making that jump so they're set up properly for their best development moving forward. As I mentioned as well, with guys like Daly and Erickson uh, departing and likely going into retirement, they need to address their blue line. Uh, their blue line clearly was not good enough last year, but you know they need to determine who's going to be a part of that moving forward. They still have guys like Danny DeKaiser. Uh, Hronik is obviously going to be a big part of their blue line as well. Uh, they have Bowie, who I said is an RFA, who could be retained. They've got Alex Biega, who could still be there as well. They've also got Patrick Nemeth. And you might be able to see younger players as well, like Sider or even Jarrett McIsaac grab spots as well, or at least on a part-time basis. But it would be wise, I think, if they could bring in another veteran D uh, that, that could really use that on the back end there. But this problem with the Red Wings, I think, is that they're going to have a hard time attracting uh, free agents because most players, before they hit free agency, they have to get a lot of experience in the league and get their seven years in. Generally, they're up around 27, 28 years old. And at that point, they're really focused on only getting paid, but winning as well. And, and some of those players may not be interested in joining a team who's at the bottom of the standings. And it's going to be a while working their way up to have contention because it could be quite a while and into their twilight years before that ever comes to be. So they will have to address a few areas, but... You know, like I said, they might not be getting any big-time free agents. I don't expect Eiserman to be out there doing that type of thing. I could see him making a few trades. Otherwise, I think they're probably going to stay the course, work on their youth, and really see what they have here moving forward. Those are my thoughts on the Detroit Red Wings offseason for this condensed season that we're going to have here. Obviously, the Stanley Cup is likely going to be awarded sometime by early October. The new season's ready to start Hopefully by December the 1st, if all goes well. So once we're in full tilt here for the offseason, that's what I expect to see from the Detroit organization. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. So let me know what you think. Maybe we can discuss further. Stay tuned for the next segment in this series, which will come with the number 30 ranked team tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.